it off so much mud on it. I mean, you know, if the water is running, you just rinse it off. It's true. But that would make connecting that a little hard. Remember, you put a ring on it, then you insert. Uh huh. Trying to say something? No, I'm saying don't forget it's real pain. Okay. Okay, give me the cutters. I feel like that could be taken a couple different ways. You give me the cutters. Hey everyone. So the water lines. So we're just gonna start right here. So going this way up to that fence and back over there. We end up teeing in to where our water line is for our house. And then it goes also down there, and then it tees again to go that way to feed the paddocks over there, and this way to feed the paddocks over here. I will insert a overhead view to kind of explain a little better on that here shortly. But for If you look at the image in front of you, it's just like the one from the rotational grazing plan video that we had. If you haven't seen that yet, please go back on our channel and find it and watch it. It'll explain a little more in depth. Basically, every blue ring equals a hydrant. Each hydrant services four paddocks. Now, at the bottom, we put an extra paddock to service our hayfield just in case that pond were to ever have an issue and leak off. We may or may not repair it. We may just turn it into a another portion of the hay field. Right now what I want to show kind of is we're using PEX tubing. So this PEX tubing is wonderful stuff. It, uh, it's freeze resistant to an extent. Obviously if you freeze it so many times it'll keep ballooning and then eventually it won't oops, and then eventually it won't be able to give anymore. So we aimed to bury at 18 inches and as you can see right here, we fell short. We're only about a foot deep. Um, part of that was because at that time, we did not have this tractor. And our big tractor was too big to actually get in here. Um, it was, again, a muddy and wet spring last year when we had to get this done in time to have water for the animals. So what we do is I put a shot off up there where we connect to the house. And in the winter time, so we turn that valve off and then there's also a blowout right after that valve where I can connect my air compressor to and then we blow all the water out of the lines. This is actually the low point right here, most likely. Well, I take that back. That one's the low point. But what we end up doing is when we shut that valve off, we put hook the air compressor up and we open this spigot right here because it's the closest feed. And then after that, once uh, we close this spigot, and we'll end up opening that one. And when we open that one, it actually ends up draining the water from the spigot over there. And we blow it out that way. And then once that's done, we close that one. And then we do the same thing over there. We'll open it up. But really, very little comes out of that. Mostly mist, if anything. Um, I say that because this uh, water system, having done it and you know basically expanding on it this year we've learned some things one the thing is like we use somebody's tractor which we we're thankful that one of our neighbors let us use their smaller tractor to do it um, it just actually didn't have the weight to be able to keep that subsoiler all the way in the ground like this tractor can and this tractor just has a lot more weight and also the tires are a lot narrower so you have more traction in that aspect but uh, it is what it is and it's in there so now what we're going to do on on the new one though is we're gonna make sure it's 18 inches after we connect right here. Once we connect right here, that is where we'll end up, you know, we'll run it down there and we'll make sure it's 18 inches from there on. Now we're not gonna, we're still gonna drain these lines and that set of lines is gonna get drained as well, but we wanna make sure it's in there the appropriate way because what'll end up happening, uh, eventually we will redo the spots on this section that we couldn't get quite deep enough. We, uh, we have an overhead map that marks them. Uh, some spots, we were, most of the spots we were able to, there's about 100 feet where it's a foot and some spots over there, it's actually about eight inches. So we just don't, don't wanna risk it. It's not worth the uh, possibility of breaking a pipe. And not only that, but our animals aren't out here in the winter time. 
Um, well, they are, but their water and everything is kept up at the barn. And we do that because we want them to come to the barn at night. Um, and then they also have other water sources. We have a stream that runs through. We have a couple of ponds. They have lots of places to get water. We just like to make sure that they have the ability to access fresh water. Access, sorry, not assess. <laughs> but I showed you this because what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to tee into this line. All I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it right here. I'm going to put my tee fitting in, and then I'll run my water line Basically, I'll follow this little trench I made, and then right about there, we'll end up following our um, subsoiler path. Now, that subsoiler is a wonderful tool. The only thing that I caution about with it is if, so we have rocky soil, like I've mentioned multiple times in our videos. If you catch a rock with that, it's not gonna, you know, on a smaller tractor like this, it's not gonna hurt it. But if you have a bigger tractor, it's going to damage that subsoiler. It's eventually either gonna break the the actual uh, cutting edge off of it, which is replaceable, of course. The other thing it might do is you catch a big enough rock and it jars, you know, every time it catches something, it's jarring those three-point arms. It can do damage to them. So I just wanna kind of warn about that. If you have good soil though, or primarily soil, you don't have to worry about that, you're in good shape. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. I'll put you guys on time lapse and I'll pause in the spots where I really think it's important for you guys to see. If you have other questions throughout the video about something I did that's on time lapse, too easy, put a comment in the uh, section below and I will answer any questions you have. So we've got the connection made to our existing watering system for the pasture. Now we're gonna head down here and we've got two hydrants to put in. So they won't take as long because we're gonna be smarter about it. We're gonna keep the pecs above the ground where we're gonna make our connection. And then after we make our connections and everything, then we'll pull it and it'll end up pulling it down inside the ground. And then we also have little PVC casings we've made I'll show you here when we install one. Not even watching the road. Just be quiet, Daisy. Alright, so the way that we attach ours to the subsoiler, because I didn't mess with making a mechanism since we have such a short amount to go, all we do is we take about two feet extra, kink it by bending it like that and it'll catch on the subsoiler and that'll pull it all the way through the ground especially if you make a free run so you make a run or two or three however many you need to get the depth you need the track you have and then you just put it in like this get it down to depth and it'll pull it straight down down there for it's warm it's been the last few days and sunny windy all right so we're down to where we want to be let back out all I'm doing is cleaning out the trench so that whenever I connect these and I pull it it'll pull it straight back down to where it was now I've got enough above the ground right here. All I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring my next one, make a, that two foot kink again, and then start driving with it. All right, so you can see how our feeder is. All it is is just a pole 
on the back of our side by side. Put on anything, you could use the forks of a tractor, whatever you have that's handy. All right, so the size of the hole is gonna be based on how big your, or how long your ripper is. Ours is a little over a foot long, so we make our hole a little bit longer. That way we can easily get our uh, tubing in there. Now, we also dig back a little bit, and then we do the same thing going forward. I'm about to do it right now. Otherwise, it's difficult to get the next tube started low enough where it's actually gonna pull it down in the ground and not keep it up high. So what we were talking about was we're going to connect this new line that we just put in the ground going that way to the one that was already in the ground and then we'll pull it and it'll end up sucking it down some. Now you got to know your limits once it gets to where it's down and then help it down. Stand on it and do stuff like that. Don't just keep pulling on it because I don't know what the, uh, the load strength is of the uh, PEX crimping tools. but. I don't want to find out because you can't, once this stuff's in the ground, it's really hard to pull it backwards. 
isn't it, Chrissy? Yep. Not that I would know from experience or anything like that. A couple hours ago. You don't know what you're talking about. He's got Alzheimer's onset early stages. An eventful day, Chrissy. You spiked the drone. I didn't do no such thing. <laughs> oh, yes, you did. The drone startled me, and I tried to regain my grip that I had lost. And as I was trying to do that, it fell to the ground. By fell, she means she helped it to the ground. Remember, you put a ring on it. Then you insert. Uh huh. Trying to say something? No, I'm saying don't forget because it's a real pain. Okay. Oh, can you give me the cutters? I feel like that could be taken a couple different ways. Can you give me the cutters? Stop me. All right, about this one. What's this one? <laughs> that be the new one or You'll the old muddy one? When this is really close to the, when this is like an inch or so away from the end, stop. Okay. If not, you have to pull it backwards. We're working on him using his descriptive words to explain things. She's just a little slow, that's all. He's a work in progress. This is just a piece of three inch PVC. It's schedule 40, but you could use thinner if you wanted. On the bottom, we've cut it to where there's a groove that goes straight through. This is so that when we put it in the ground, so if this was the line going through, if this was the line going through, I put it straight in here, push it straight down. Now the PEX line is just a hair smaller than that, so it'll fit all right. And then my other piece is sticking up. The piece is sticking up, my hydrant's gonna go into. This makes it to where if I have issues with the hydrant later, I don't have to dig up to find where the hydrant connects to the line. All I have to do is simply unscrew it and then put my new one in and screw it back on. We're gonna set it right over that. We're gonna set this on here. Then, to tap it in. Should've brought it in. Stand on that line because it's going to bounce. Is that the ring? Oh, rookie mistakes. to grip the top connection on but fortunately we've got enough slack that we can oops, we can pull it back down dang it Okay, let's try this again. Now, she's gonna step on the line. I'm gonna put this back on. We're just gonna tap it in. In case you're wondering what this is, it is the hydrant. Moment of truth, everyone. It's a 
long way for all that water to travel. Uh, from the house to here is right around a thousand feet. Pushing water, it's a good sign. So if you're not sure if water's coming, you can put your thumb over it like this. And as the water is pushing down this way, it'll build pressure against the air that's there. Remember, air does not compress. Or sorry, water does not compress, so it's going to push that air. Like I said, a lot, that's a lot of line to fill. I'm getting tired. I had to record with my phone. The battery in the GoPro is dead. And I didn't bring the cable out here with us. So. Uh, first water that comes out is probably going to be brown. Just because it, uh, oops, sorry. Just because it's, uh, I'm sure there's dirt in the lines. I'm sure I've contaminated it somewhere. So. There it comes. Got water. Oh, it's not brown. That's kind of surprising. So since that was the long run, we should have water through all these lines now. Makes it easy for us to go back and check to see if there is any leaks. Um, like I said, air is is easier to leak out than water, but it's very difficult to see air leaking out, whereas it's easy to see water leaking out. And I'm looking down at it right now, it's looking good. Chrissy just drove by with Bella. That dog follows that side by side or four wheeler or tractor, whatever you're driving. She's all about following it. If she can't get in front of you, she'll probably be in front of Bella or in front of Chrissy as she comes around. Yep, there she is. It's the official pace dog, huh? That's the official pace dog? She looks tired. All right, let's check this one real quick. Well, that didn't take long since it was already primed, so that's good. And I don't see no water pooling down there other than what I just pushed in there. And now it's leaking out from the weep hole. Remember that if you don't put a casing on there like this, you're gonna have to fill that with gravel because it has to be able to leak away. So, good news though, it all works, no leaks. So, thanks for watching and uh, have a blessed week. Oh, it's a beautiful sunset. I know it's kind of like I said, the cameras just don't do justice, but again, have a blessed week. We're glad you could tag along and you could watch Chrissy pester me. But, thanks again, have a great week.